Welcome back to my Next.js course. Today we're going to talk about fetching data in a Next.js application. Let's first cover some theoretical fundamentals about data fetching. You can fetch data on the client and on the server. It's recommended to always fetch data on the server for several reasons. First of all, it's more secure. If you use tokens or API keys for some of your external APIs from which you fetch your data, which is probably the case, they will be more secure in the server-side code. Second, you will render and fetch data on the same environment, which means less back and forth requests, in turn, a more performant application. Finally, you will use less main thread work on the client, which is preferable if you can achieve that. In Next.js, data fetching is possible in layouts, pages, and individual components. Let's fetch data in practice. I will use the Star Wars API to retrieve a list of planets and render them in my planets list component. I'll create a get planets function and in it, I'll just fetch. If there is a problem with the fetch request, we would of course want to throw an error. Finally, I would like to return the response JSON. In the planets list component, I'll use my get planets function Notice that my server-side component can also be asynchronous. Finally, I'll render my planet as a list. If we test now, the list is rendered as expected. This is all it takes to fetch data in a server-side component in Next. When fetching data, you will frequently need access to the incoming HTTP request headers and cookies. Next gives you access to these with the helper headers and cookies functions. You can import headers from next headers. Then you can use the method to get a headers list. From it, you can retrieve any HTTP header from the incoming request. You can import cookies from next headers as well and you can use it to get the cookie store, from which you can retrieve any cookie value from the HTTP request. Data fetching can be static and dynamic. By default, Next uses static fetching. This means that once you reach an endpoint and re it returns data, Next caches that data. If you attempt to reach the same endpoint again with the same settings, Next will not make the network request to the API. It will instead use its cache. This is static fetching. Dynamic fetching, on the other hand, means that every time you make a request, no cache is used or made. Instead, the API endpoint is reached and the data is retrieved. As you can imagine, dynamic fetching is used for data that changes constantly. As Next supports static data fetching with cache, it also provides mechanisms to invalidate the cache. You can invalidate it using two methods, in the background or on demand. In the background means invalidating the cache at a set time interval. On demand means pinging the application through an API to request invalidation when the data is updated. This is useful when using a headless CMS, for example. To do revalidation at a time interval in the fetch options, you can set the revalidate option in the next property. The value of this option is the time after which to revalidate the cache in seconds. If I input 3600, the cache will be revalidated every hour. In order to do on-demand cache revalidation, you need to create an API route to which the external data provider will make a request once the data is updated. This data provider can be a headless CMS, for example. In this case, I've called my route revalidate. You should also create an environment variable with a secret token for security. You don't want everyone to have access to cache revalidation for your application. You can create an environment variable in a .env file. In the API route, we will first check if the token parameter matches my environment variable. If it doesn't, we return an invalid token error. 
and the actual revalidation happens with the response revalidate function, where you enter the path you would like to revalidate. After that, I'll return a success code and some success JSON. And of course, if an error occurs with the revalidation, we would return an error code and an error message. An external application can now make a request at the new endpoint to revalidate the cache of the given route on demand. You can fetch data sequentially or in parallel. Here's the difference. When you have to do multiple API requests, sequential fetching means request number two starts after request number one is finished. Parallel fetching means starting the two requests simultaneously and running them in parallel. As you can probably figure out and see from the graph, parallel fetching blocks rendering for a shorter amount of time and is preferable, but it's not always possible. Sometimes you need the response data from request number one in order to make request number two. Here's how you can achieve sequential and parallel fetching in Next. If you just create the second request beneath the first one and await both requests, you're doing sequential fetching. As request number two, we will wait for request number one to finish. If you want to fetch in parallel, you have to remove the awaits of both requests and await both of them together with the promise all method. This is now a parallel fetch. These are not methods that are specific to Next.js. These are standard JavaScript promises and async await, but Next.js server-side components support them. The last thing to mention about fetch requests in Next is to not worry about duplicating requests. The framework will do automatic deduplication of fetch requests. If you have multiple fetch requests to the same endpoint with the same settings, it will only execute a single request. This means you should not focus on reducing duplicating requests, but rather on your code readability, which is more important. This wraps today's video about data fetching. There are more topics to talk about that are related to data fetching, like loading UI or error handling, which we'll talk about in future videos. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified when the next video in the series is released. Take care.